Good morning, folks. How are you this morning? Hey, I've got to keep my voice down because there's a kitten in the house. My wife, Margaret, uh, bought her a kitten because she lost a cat. We had a cat called Scotty, but he died. So we, Margaret was getting a bit lonely and upset, so we bought her this kitten. I called it Bo. It's named after Buttons and Bows. Some of you old people might remember the song Buttons and Bows. Well, next door was a cat called Buttons. Kids got a cat called Buttons. We call our kid, so, so we've called our kitten Bo. Buttons and Bo. But anyway, Bo's asleep in Margaret's bed. Margaret's my wife, by the way. And for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ron Bishop, and I'm uh, running a campaign to change the New Zealand employment law because it's crooked, <coughs> and uh, I want to change it. So I'm talking every morning uh, on the subjects of employment law. I'm actually talking about myself because... Um, I'm writing my life story online by video, and I'm putting them all up on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Now, we pick up this morning, uh, the story this morning, in the year 2006. In November 2006, I uh, was not wanting staff, and I advertised for staff for my business. And I, a woman by the name of Christine applied for the job. She was a woman in her late 40s. And uh, she applied for the job. So <clears throat> she had a reference. She used to work for the National Bank. Uh, and she worked for Thomas Cook Travel and Harvey Wheel Travel and um, Brian Stanford Insurance Brokers were the three main ones. I, she had a reference from the um, Harvey Wheel Travel which said she was a good person and everything. Uh, so, you know, she looked pretty good. And I, and I, and I wanted someone, because I was running a debt collection agency, which handles a lot of money. And anyway, she, I gave her the job, and it turned out that she uh, was dishonest with me, and I had to dismiss her. Um, now, I must say at this stage, I'm not putting Christine down. Uh, it wasn't her fault. A lot of it was other people's faults. She had a lot of people giving her a hand, and one of the, one of the organizations that gave her a hand was the National Bank, because um, she used to work for the National Bank, and uh, she came, I know, in November... But she came with us in November, and in December we had a party. At, she had a wine bar called the Bar, bar Code Wine Bar in Timaru. And we had a party there at Christmas time. We shouted, I shouted for all the staff and her staff and my, you know, uh, family and stuff. And, uh, we, and, she, and she said she was going to hold a, a reunion with the National Bank because she worked for the National Bank for quite, quite some time and she was going to hold a reunion in, in the, her wine bar. And uh, anyway, uh, <coughs> just a minute. Now at the time we had a trust account. Um, debt collection agencies always used to have trust accounts. That's where we put the money coming from the debtors. We collect money on clients' money. And then we put the money from the, the, the our clients' debtors into our trust account, and we, we used to pay out the, um, the our clients every month from the trust account. But anyway, Christine said to me uh, she uh, she reckoned we should have be earning interest on the trust account. It was just going into a ordinary account, a check account, uh, and wasn't earning any interest. And she said we had to have we should have interest be earning interest. Now I. I didn't worry about the interest because it was now money belonged. The money belonged to our clients, and I wasn't really worried. And I said, "Christine, no, we don't really want to make interest out of, out of our clients' money." Uh, but anyway, what happened is she she came to me uh, a couple of hours later and said, "It's all fixed." And I said, "What's all fixed?" She said, "I've opened a bank account, another bank account called the 08 account, and you're gonna we're gonna earn interest on the." On the money, and I want all the debtors' money, the people the people pay their debts, put all the money into this particular 08 account. Now, I wasn't very happy with that, and I thought, how the hell did she open the bank account in my name, in our name, um, without my signature? And, uh, but I didn't, I thought, well, she's, she works for a bank, she knows all about it, I have to trust this lady. She knows what she's doing, and I needed some advice, you know. I was busy doing other stuff. 
Uh, anyway, it turned out that she, the reason she opened the bank account and, and uh, the other bank account was she was, she was going to sell insurance. She, she lined herself up to sell life insurance. She got an agency selling life insurance and she put all the life insurance in this particular account. But I'll get to that later on. But what I want to talk, but what I want to now, I'm going to ask the, I'm going to ask the bank now, the National Bank, I hope they're listening to this, I'm going to ask them, is, is it, is it, um, can anyone open a bank account in the employer's name without the uh, authority of the, of the holder? In other words, can anyone just go into a bank and say, well, listen, I've just got a new job and I want to open a bank account in my boss's name, uh, and, and they do it over the phone? They can do it over the phone? And, and, and you don't have to have any ID or anything? Or permission from the authority holder? Account authority holder? It's, it's not on. But anyway... The other question I want to ask you, the, uh, anyway, then Christine come to me and said, uh, listen, I've got all these clients, because uh, she used to work for an insurance broker, and she said, I could, we could sell insurance here in this office, because I've got all these clients, and uh, we could sell some insurance. So I said, oh, well, if that's, that's what, if it'll help us make some money, that'll be good. You organised the uh, agency agreement with the, with the insurance company, so she did. A company called Fidelity Life, and I'll get back to them later. But anyway, what happened? To cut a long story short, um, she started selling in life insurance in our office, and we never had an agreement or anything. But she just started selling life insurance as soon as as soon as I agreed that we could that she could, and uh, and then she got some commissions. She got about five thousand dollars worth of commission or something. And she put it in this bank account, this new OAT bank account that she'd opened, you see. Uh, and then she shuffled it all around and she put it in, we had three bank accounts and she shuffled it all around in different bank accounts. And uh, then she came to me one day and she said, I'm going on holiday. She'd been with us about six months and she said, I'm going on holiday. <coughs> and she started putting checks under my nose. Because I'd said to her previously, she was always putting checks on her, asking me to sign checks, you see. And I trusted her, and I was signing these checks. <coughs> and I said, well, listen, you get, uh, we'll have to give you signing authority, you know. And she, she got quite excited about it. I was going to give her signing authority. So she started signing the checks herself. We had no authority from the bank. She had no authority from the bank. It hadn't all gone through. But she just started signing checks. In fact, she signed a check for 870 odd dollars and cashed it, made it out to cash, and cashed it. Because she was going on holiday, and she, and she put these checks under, under my nose, and they were all signed, she'd signed them. Uh, and I said, but you signed these checks yourself. She said, oh, yes, I, I, I forgot. I, I'm always signing checks. I've got all these businesses, and I'm signing checks all the time, and I just, just made a mistake. But anyway, it turned out she didn't make a mistake. She did just doing it on purpose, you know. And I said she'd, she'd been in the foreign exchange, experienced in foreign exchange. Well, she went on holiday on a cruise. And uh, she wrote a check out for $2,000 and took it to the bank. She'd signed it herself and she gave it to me to sign because she reckoned it was a commission on her, on her insurance. And I didn't agree to pay a commission and she was just getting an hourly rate. But anyway, she, she wanted to do all this, so away she went. <coughs> and... Uh, she went on holiday, and that's when we found out that she put all this money in this and mixed it up in our bank accounts. It was hell to pay. Anyway, she withdrew two thousand dollars from the f from our trust account. Now it wasn't her money; it was our client's money. But she withdrew two thousand dollars. She wrote a check out for cash, signed it herself, got me to account to sign it, and 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 the and the check went to the bank and was cancelled check was cancelled but she used the check the cancelled check to withdraw two thousand dollars from her trust account to buy foreign exchange with right and she never paid any tax on it or anything like that and, and there was bloody hell to pay so now i have a question to the national bank can anyone withdraw cash from your customer's trust account to purchase foreign exchange without your client's signed authority Okay, because that's what she did. She withdrew without assigned authority. Now, 
Another question I want to ask the National Bank, did the National Bank admit liability to any of the accusations made upon you by your customers, Ron and Margaret Bishop, in 2007? Because I complained and uh, they admitted liability. Number four, did the Banking Ombudsman make any recommendations to compensate Ron and Margaret Bishop Data Communications for their losses caused by the dispute? Because it was a dispute over it, you see. Now, did Mr. and Mrs. Bishop of Data Communications receive any compensation from the National Bank for their loss of faith and trust in the National Bank? I'd been dealing with the National Bank for 50 years. Was the National Bank's decision not to compensate Mr. and Mrs. Bishop influenced in any way by the Employment Relations Authority decision? I'll talk about that shortly. Will the National Bank be offering Mr. and Mrs. Bishop any compensation for the stress and anxiety that they have suffered as a result of the bank's refusal to take liability in the past when they needed it most. Right, here's what happened. When I found out that Christine was being dishonest with us, I laid a complaint to the Banking Ombudsman. That's where you can, there's a Banking Ombudsman, you can make, if you've got a complaint about a bank, you can go to the Banking Ombudsman. And it turned out, the Banking Ombudsman said yes, the bank had been wrong in letting uh, Christine open an account without their signature, and they had been wrong in uh, uh, having the money taken out of the uh, trust account, and that we should get compensation. And they gave us a figure. I said it wasn't enough. But anyway, we never ever got it. Now, why didn't we get the compensation? We didn't get the compensation because... In the meantime, it had gone to the, our case had gone to the Employment Relations Authority, uh, and Christine had made a personal grievance claim, and she won. She won the first round in the Employment Relations Authority. They said she wasn't dishonest, so the National Bank took advantage of this and said, "Well, if Christine's not dishonest, we won't pay Mr. and Mrs. Bishop any money. We promise to pay them, but we won't pay them." So we've never had any money from the National Bank even though we were promised and the, and, and the banking ombudsman, ombudsman said they had to pay. Never happened. Okay? So this is why I'm going to the National Bank and saying, now we want some compensation. I've lost my job. I've been five years fighting the law, of uh, 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 employment law, and it's all the, a lot of it's the National Bank's fault because if they'd have been upfront with us and honest with us right at the start, uh, we wouldn't be in the position we are today. So there it is. I put a million dollars on the table. I said, my reputation in Timaru is worth a million dollars. And I'm asking for compensation from a number of people and organisations who helped Christine do what she did. And the National Bank is one of them. And tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about another firm called, an insurance company called Fidelity Life Insurance. Fidelity Life Insurance. We're going to talk about that. So until tomorrow, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.